So I think this is no power. So it's already been looked at, but I think it's no power. So let's have a look. Yeah, so we've got a single beep. Every 10 seconds or so. Okay, right. Got ya. Cool. All right. So single beep every 10 seconds or so. I'll leave the power plugged in because I want to get some voltage rails. So yeah, this has been worked on, but that's fine. So they've left the screws and whatnot out because well, it makes it easier for me, I suppose. Let's just put them to one side so I know where they are. There are some screws in the bag. If I do get it working, there are some screws in the bag. If I don't get it working, it'll go back without, with just these screws in. But if I do get it working, then it'll go back. That's the wrong screw, my friend. That is the wrong screw. Yeah, if I do get it working, then I'll put every screw back. If I don't get it working, it goes back as it comes to me. Uh, let's just check for any more screws. No, no more in there. Ah, damn it. You could have left those ones out. This video probably still would have been here without today's sponsor. But hey, it's time to show something, right? So here goes. Here at The Coder Productions, we love nothing more than to take as much money from you, the viewer, as we possibly can. Which is why we're proud to talk to you about ConsoleFix.shop. A great place for you to spend your hard-earned cash. I mean, yeah, fair enough. You get parts and supplies that help you fix things, but you've got to give me some money in return. Nothing in life's free, and if you pay me for it, you might appreciate it more. Or not, hey, I'm not judging. With that being said, we do have some pretty cool stuff on the shelves, including power supplies, HDMI ports, charging chips, MOSFETs, and whatever else you can think of that'll give you the illusion that you're getting a good deal. So head on over to the online store by clicking on the link in the video description, and if there's one thing I can guarantee, is that there will be a way for me to take your money. Console Fix, your friendly money-grabbing YouTuber. <laughs> Right, by the look of that antenna, the power supply has been checked. The antenna's unrooted, so this, this part of the antenna should be underneath this corner here. There's like a little clip on the power supply. So it looks like the power supply has been checked. Whether they've done any work to it, I don't know. So first thing I'm going to do is check my voltage rails. See what rails I've got, what, what rails I'm missing. So we're very likely going to get a 12 volt, yep. Uh, let's zoom in so you can see a little bit closer at what I'm doing. There you go. Might have had to stop wobbling. Oi, I said stop wobbling. Thank you. Did we get a 5 volt rail? We should do, yep. We should also get a 3.3, yep. We get 5 there. We get 3.3 .3 there. Five there, two there. Do we get point eight here? We do not. We do not get a point eight there. No. No point twenty seven volt there, not two point five. So we've got no 2.5 volt here, no 2.5 there, and no 5 there. All right, okay. So 2.5 is missing, which means 0 0.8 is going to be missing anyway because it's not being generated. And we've got 5 volt missing down here as well. Okay, so the question now is number one, has the liquid metal been checked? And um, if it has, and it's all good, then what else do we have wrong? So let's, uh, let's just go into continuity mode a second. I'm not going to pull this off unless I... No, that's been checked. All right. That's been taken off before, so... 
Yeah, that liquid metal, I'll check it seeing as though it's been taken off before. I don't like to take it off unless I have to, but I will check it just in case someone's missed something. Um, just seeing as though it's been checked already. Um, it's best to check it just to make 100% sure. Yep, no problems there. So very unlikely to be the liquid metal because it only ever spilled there, really. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's check the HDMI encoder area first. So I'm in diode mode. Red probe on ground. 0.34, 0.16. 16, um, 16, alright, cool, that's all good, on the encoder, let's check this US, these USB, uh, these USB circuits, 0 0.38, 75, 25, that's going to be, well, that's going to be fine, whoopsie, yeah, all of that seems fine, Let's check around here. So I'm just going to check this uh, both and magnetics module. Because if this shows up short, then we'd have a bad safe bridge. Because it goes to the safe bridge through these wires here. Or these traces here. So it, com it comes from that both end, it comes to here. Uh, on these differential pairs, and then it goes into the top of the safe bridge here. So, yeah, if we had an issue with that, if that showed up short at all, then it would be that what caused it, uh, the safe bridge what causes it. It's not going to be the BIOS IC because we do get some sort of a boot sequence. So it's very unlikely to be the BIOS IC. Let's have a look around the Wi Fi module. 39, 32, 39, 39, 48. Okay, that's absolutely fine on that area. Let's check this area. So, fuse is good. I've got beeper turned off, by the way, so. That area is fine. Let's check this area. Uh, bingo. Bingo. We have a short on this area here. And the fuse is also blown. Right, okay. So, this fuse is bad for a start. Uh, so if we're going to continuity mode with beeper turned on. So, there you go. And, yep, that fuse is definitely bad. So that is definitely an issue. So we've got no short that side of the fuse. But as soon as we touch this side of the fuse, we dead short to ground. So it's likely going to be a single cap. So if you look here... Obviously, that shouldn't be shorted to ground, and it is. It's likely going to be a single cap. The easiest way to find out is to just inject voltage because there's too much on the circuit. You've got this circuit here, but then on top of that, you've also got this area Whoops, here. So this area here is where we're supposed to get 0.8 volts. In fact, you can see some signs of heat around here as well. Uh, something's got pretty hot. Um, in fact, it probably is the dialogue I see because that's got really, really hot around the chip itself. Uh, so we're supposed to get 0.8 volts here. That was missing. We're supposed to get 2.5 volts here. That was missing. And I can't remember exactly which one it is, but one of these is supposed to get 5 volts, and that comes from here. So we've definitely got... 
Um, it's probably going to be a 5 volt short, something on the 5 volt side. But that is definitely short to ground. And like I said, the easiest way to figure out what the hell is wrong is to just inject voltage. Because I am lazy as hell. And I don't want to sit around hunting all day for a short if I don't have to. So I'll just inject voltage and be a lazy technician. So I'm going to set my bench power supply up at 1 volt. And I'm going to solder a wire to here and make it nice and easy for myself. I'm going to make it nice and easy. I'm going to solder... Well, I say I'm going to solder a wire. I'm not going to solder a wire. I'm just going to solder some used wick. Because I'm also a cheap technician. And I don't want to waste money. So, I'm going to grab some used wick. I'm going to trim it in half. Like so. So that it's not too thick. Or not too wide, rather. Not too thick. I'm a cheapskate, you see. So, let's just grab some flux. And I'm going to solder to this cap here. Because I'm a cheapskate, you see. Right, so let's tin that. Let's solder that. Create a nice little bridge. And then I can just use my crocodile clip. And when I've got the thermal cam set up, I can just clip it to that. And then I can move around freely. I can move freely, you see. Right. So, here's where I've got that wire. And that is just there. We've got five amps of current. <laughs> That's got a lot of current going through that. Ooh. I think you'll find that's exactly the cap that I've just soldered to. <laughs> I think that cap that I've just soldered to is where the short is. That's what it appears to be according to the thermal camera. Either that one or that one. Let's find out. So let's pop a bit of... Well, no, let's not. Let's not put the isopropyl alcohol on until I've actually injected voltage. So we've got 5 amps of current going through that right now. So it's no wonder the fuse blew. Let's grab some IPA. Something is getting very, very freaking hot. And it looks like it's that cap. No wonder we've got a singe mark on the other side of the board. Yeah, so it looks like that cap is what is actually short. Okay. Right, so, so, if we go for, where's my nozzle gone to my hot air, there it is, so, that's short right now. Yep. Yep. As soon as I remove that cap, the short is gone. No more beeping. Yep, that short is now cleared. Cool. Good stuff. So I also need to remove the fuse because that's blown. It needs a replacement fuse as well.
You can see just how hot that fuse has actually got. Just by the fact that it's just breaking away while I'm... Uh, while I'm using soldering iron. Now look at that. Yep, so the fuse was literally just breaking up. It's, it's got that hot that it's just, it's got no integrity left. There we go, right. Time to grab some replacement components from a donor board. So let's just double check, let's make sure that this fuse you got is good. Yep. And there's no short on that area, which means that we can take both of those components Pop that to one side. Grab the fuse. Replacement fuse. Uh, that's not the cap I'm looking for. Where have I just put that cap? Damn it, I've lost it. Well, they're all the, they're all the same value on that line anyway, so. <laughs> I've lost that cap. God damn it. I'll grab another one. Yeah, they're all the same value on that line, so it doesn't really matter too much. And then, of course, as I, uh, as I put it on there, I'll, I'll find the one that I was looking for. You punk. I'll put it on there just to... Just to know 100%, as far as I'm aware, they are all the same value, but just to just to make sure I'm putting the right value on. Damn it, I need to retin this now. Mofo. Ah, yes, son of a... Well, that's gone. <laughs> Typical. I guess that'll teach me for using 99% airflow, huh? There we go. Right. Okay. So, let's just clean up. That'll do. Thermal camera. Let's just put that away. Do 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 da do da. This should work now, theoretically. Unless he's taken out um, the fuse in the top left corner, which it can. It can take out that fuse, but it's not likely. It has done in the past. I've had it take it out before, but meh. Boom. Boom. We win. Yet again, we win. We are still the masters of PS5s. Ha! We are still the masters of PS5s. 
Nice one, laddie. Wi Fi antenna needs replacing. Beep, beep, beep. That's what I call the three beeps of success. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah, boy. The three beeps of success. Winner, winner. Boom. 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 Right, that's it. That'll get a full test tomorrow. Turn off. Power of the mind. <laughs> we win. Another PS5 fixed. Yeah, so... Basically, to put it frankly, one tiny capacitor which costs probably about a penny and a fuse which costs about 50 pence is all that was stopping this from pairing on. So yeah, this can go back to the, well back to my customer, he'll get it back to his customer. Sure we'll be more than happy to hear the good news tomorrow. Uh, good stuff, happy days. Another winner. I'll put this back together tomorrow because I never put them back together while I'm streaming. Uh, it does need a replacement antenna. Um, I'll let the customer know. I mean, this isn't going to go back until Tuesday, so uh, I'll let the customer know. And if he wants me to change the antenna, I can. If, if he wants to change it himself, then, you know, so be it. But it does need an antenna. So I'll obviously give him two quotes, one with and one without, because uh, obviously you've got to pay money to do that. So, yeah, happy days, though. Managed to fix it. Thank you all for, for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, as, as always. Take it easy, guys. See you all in the next one. Peace.